Any JRPGs do you feel like were too long or overstayed or welcome? But what do you mean overstayed their welcome? As in they got boring and I and I quit and I didn't like them and I don't recommend them? Because I, I, I play a lot of JRPGs that definitely overstayed their welcome, but I still like them a lot. Like Persona 5, I got to a point where it was just dragging over and over and over again. I was like, man, just fucking end. But I still love it. Uh, there's also Namco Cross Capcom. It's fan translated on the PS2. It's like 75 hours long. It definitely, definitely overstayed its welcome and it was horrible. But I still love the freaking game and I still made it to the end. Will I ever play it again? Actually, yes, I'd love to play it again one of these days. But it's one of those games you play once or twice in a lifetime and that's it. Uh, what else? Well, any Persona game 3 and 4, same. Uh, any Trails game, all the, well, most of them anyway, except the first games, all the Cold Steel games. Zero Asher, they didn't, they weren't that long. Sky was the same, the Sky Trilogy. But the Trails of Cold Steel Saga, especially 3 and 4, definitely overstayed their welcome. Uh, what else? I mean, but, I mean, you gotta understand, they were still awesome. So I guess I'm saying that it's awesome, right, that they overstay their welcome. Matt's saying Dragon Quest XI, but, uh, well, yeah, kinda, but my problem with Dragon Quest XI is the post game, that the true ending is locked in the post game and you gotta complete it and it's freaking brutal and it's a massive grind fest, so because of the true ending, it definitely overstayed its welcome, but the main story alone, I, I, I felt satisfied with it, I think I did like 45 hours, and I love those 45 hours. But yeah, uh, what else? Yeah, some of the longest, man. Uh, I got some obscure for you. Uh, you you're, gonna, you're gonna be surprised, but Eternal Poison. Eternal Poison definitely overstays its welcome, because again, it locks a true ending until you beat uh, the game with the fourth main character, which is Rondamion. And once you do, you get access to the final boss and you get the, fight, uh, the final boss with all characters. Uh, but still, it was kind of long because every character arc is like 10 hours at the very least, right? So it definitely overstayed its welcome as well, but it was awesome. I fucking love it. Uh, Tears to Tiara. Has anybody played that? Tears to Tiara 2 on the PlayStation 3. I didn't play the first one. It never came to consoles, I think. Or it was never released outside of Japan. I forget. But Tears to Tiara 2 is also really long. Definitely overstayed its welcome. It's a game that... Uh, it's heavy on the reading side, got a lot of visual level parts. Between some chapters there wasn't a lot of reading, but in other chapters there was a shit ton of reading, so... Definitely, most games that have a lot of reading, that have a lot of visual novel stuff, they definitely overstay their welcome. Uh, the Utawara Rumono games, especially Mask of Truth and Mask of Deception. Not the first one, you know, the Prelude to the Fallen, I never felt it had that much reading. Uh, as opposed to its sequels, which are really fucking hardcore on reading. Sometimes you spend like two hours just reading. And yeah, those definitely overstayed their welcome. Utawari no Mono. Uh, not monochrome Mobius, though. That was great. No visual novel stuff in there. But then there, there are also other JRPGs with visual novel stuff, like Sakura Wars. And But they're short games you can be in like 15 to 20 to 25 hours even reading everything, so they didn't overstay their welcome. But yeah, the Utawari Romono series definitely. Some compiled hard RPGs definitely overstay their welcome because even though they're not too long, they're too grindy and very repetitive, so you end up doing the same over and over again. Uh, yeah, I just gave you plenty of examples. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. <laughs> uh, what are some of your favorite JRPG dungeons? For me, a great dungeon needs, needs to not have the following. Random encounters, a crap ton of puzzles, and if it does have puzzles, let them be easy to solve or not too excruciating. Or if you're gonna do hard as fuck puzzles, maybe just one, one in the entire dungeon, and that's it. Uh, but then again, there have been some dungeons in the past that were completely ruined by one puzzle. Star Ocean 3, I'm looking at you. That the Dragon Flute puzzle killed the dungeon. But yeah, and what they need to have to be good? Great graphics. I, I've seen some good dungeons that have bland and boring graphics. Uh, and they need to have, like, 
some kind of um, layout that makes it interesting, right? Like you, you enter the first two, three, four screens of the dungeon, and then uh, the next screens are different and they look different, or you 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 enter a different part of the same dungeon, and it looks different. For example, uh, uh, I don't know. Can't think of any any dungeon right now because most dungeons in most JRPG no 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 most dungeons in most RPGs no matter the, the genre no matter the place they come from uh, almost the entire dungeon looks the same like the Trail series for example a Persona 3 for example a big chunk of Tartarus uh, the first several floors they look exactly the same and then you got the next bunch of floors. Which with a different layout and different colors and graphics, but there's like 20, 20, 30 floors and they look the same. Pers but take a game like Persona 5, for example, that every dungeon is a palace and is different. But then again, all the the entire palace reuses several assets, right? And they end up looking the same and they're long. So I can't think of a really good dungeon right now to be like this is one of my favorite dungeons because I've never been a dungeon fan. Well, I don't I don't dislike them, right? But I just don't pay a lot of attention to that. Like mm, I'm writing, I'm, I'm playing a game and I'm paying a lot of attention to the dungeon design so I can talk about it. No, maybe I should start doing that more often. Actually, it's a good idea to to discuss dungeons because dungeon design can actually kill the experience for a lot of people. Uh, but I can't think of one specific right now, but I can think of several games that have beautiful graphics like Odin's Fear, and it doesn't matter the type of area you're fighting on, everything you go, everywhere you go, it looks fucking beautiful. But they aren't... Odin's Fear doesn't really have dungeons, except for some small places like the fireplace, and the dungeon is all fire, and even though it also reuses a lot of assets, I mean, they are freaking gorgeous assets, right? So there you go, um, but yeah, man, I, I don't think I can choose a favorite right now, a bunch of favorites and say, yeah, these are my favorites, no. I will have to like really start paying attention and remember and, and sit down and think. But because there are also a lot of beautifully looking dungeons, but they have random encounters like Tales of Legendia. Some of the dungeons in Tales of Legendia, especially uh, post-game, well not post-game, in the second arc, Wow, beautiful, man, when you visit all those uh, special places. Oh, um, but random encounters, yeah. Grand the Grandia series has some, have some interesting dungeons, Grandia 3. But I'm just pulling examples out of my ass right now. So yeah, I'm not gonna compromise and answer that question, man, but that was a good topic. I mean, what makes... I transformed your question into what makes a JRPG dungeon great, and I just answered that. Yeah. No super annoying puzzles, very few puzzles or none at all, no random encounters, variety in graphics, variety in areas, uh, easy to traverse but also at the same time fun to explore, yeah, that's what makes a, a great JRPG dungeon. My favorites though, I don't know right now. Persona game with the best female cast, okay, uh, so the first one... I hate the game, but it has an interesting cast. I love the girl, the blonde girl with the uh, rapier sword. Uh, then there's the, uh, the the girl with the short hair that, that throws knives or cards. I liked her personality. Then there's um, the main character is kind of generic, the, the female main character in that game. She's just okay at best. I don't remember the other girl though. So, uh, Persona 2, you got Maya, who's the silent protagonist. Eternal Punishment, and you got her friend, uh, what was her name, Ulala, right, Ulala, <laughs> what a dumb name, she's awesome, and the hairdresser, uh, she's awesome, she's a very fun and likable character, who else is there, I don't, I don't remember another female character in that game, but then again, I never finished it, Innocent Scene, you got the girl, the girlfriend, who's not that interesting, to be honest, the one who's obsessed with martial arts and shit, <laughs> Uh, and then there's the other girl, not really, and there's Maya herself, and her other friend who is the photographer, reporter, right? The one with the uh, cur uh, curly hair and a hat, cool character, but not really. Mm. So they're okay, the first Persona games are okay in female cast. 
Uh, Persona 3, you got Yukari, who uh, very, very slowly grows on you. At the beginning, you kind of dislike her. She's the classic uh, uptight, uh, vain... Um, well, I don't know many synonyms to describe that type of female <laughs> characters in English. I know in Spanish. Uh, we got a lot of names for that. those types of girls <laughs> here in Mexico. But yeah, girls like that, right? They're not like, uh, too good for you, right? Um, and kind of delicate and arrogant. And she's pretty much, fixi pretty much fixated on uh, with Mitsuru because she feels inferior, stuff like that. But she's also the kind of girl that uh, rebels against the system and uses a short mini skirt instead of the regular skirt. So that's the attitude, I guess. I don't know. Yukari takes it takes a long time to grow on you. But then Mitsuru, she's the queen of ice. She's a cold-hearted bitch, a dominatrix, and I still fucking love her. Not my type of girl in real life, but I just I like that type of character in video games. And Mitsuru, I love her, and she's gorgeous. And Aegis, Aegis is one of my favorite female characters in video games in general. I fucking love her. And then you got Fuka. That she's cute, sure, but she's also kind of forgettable. But anyway, she's, I like Fuka. And then Four. Uh, four is the worst, in my opinion. Uh, the characters are alright. Uh, so let's like Chie. She's fun. I like her. She also grows on you. It takes a while. At the beginning, you're like, mm, I have no opinion. I'm indifferent. But she grows on you, Chie. Uh, Yukiko, she's beautiful and whatever. And she's like the perfect girl and the perfect waifu. But yeah, she's also kind of... Doesn't get a lot of development or love, like a strong personality. She's just kind of there. A lot of girls, uh, I've seen a lot of girls trashing her, saying she's like really generic. <laughs> but I like Yukiko, but there's not. She she doesn't stand out. And then there's a reset. I fucking hate reset. She's an idol character, so I I don't like her. And then who else is there? That's it, right? Or am I forgetting about a certain other character? Let's not spoil, but that certain other character turned out to be one of my favorite characters in Persona 4. But then again, after the twist, it's like... There's nothing that interesting about her. Okay, so Persona 5, finally. Um, you got An. Oh my gosh, he's like Yukari on steroids. I don't know, like, oh my, three times Yukari, man. Oh man, she's hot and whatever, but... Oh man, no. Kind of an unlikable character, in my opinion. I hate girls like that in real life. And then there's Makoto. I fucking love Makoto. She's my girl. I love her. So, uh, has great personality, great development, badass attitude. Like, kind of like the kind of nerdy school girl, uh, academics girl, but then she, she likes rock music and the motorcycle, the bike, the, the outfit. I mean, that's metal right there, man. She's a metal head. <laughs> Uh, and then there's the other girl, which is like, mm, I, I, I forget her name. <laughs> I don't even remember her name. She's so forgettable, man. The, the, the last female party member you get. What's her name? Come on, guys. She's like... And, well, there's Kasumi. Kasumi on Royal, she's fine, but I don't know her very well because I never finished Royal. I don't even have the game, so I don't have a strong opinion. Haru! Yeah, Haru from Persona 5, yeah, she's kind of like okay-ish at best. She's she's boring. So, winner, Persona 3. You're probably gonna think I'm, I'm biased, but I think it does have the most the most interesting female cast. Right? Oh, Futaba, I forgot about Futaba on Persona 5. I'll, let me tell you something about Futaba, she's so forced. She's like that stereotype. The nerdy computer hacking nerd, but taken to uh, an exaggerated level, man. I, I know, I don't know, man. She seemed her character herself. The writing of her character she seemed, seemed kind of forced to me. I like the character, don't take me wrong, but I just know I don't know. She's so stereotyped, man. So stereotyped. And I'm more about multi-dimensional characters, you know. And Futaba is a freaking cliche. A good one, I like that cliche, but it's so, it's it's so, it goes overboard, over the top, you know, so 
I'm staying with Persona 3, not because it's my favorite in the series, but because I do legitimately believe it has the best Persona female cast. Check out the Wild Arms 5 music. That's a game that needs a remaster. It's exclusive on PS2, like what the fuck, Sony? Well, probably because uh, Sony doesn't have the rights in North America. You know who has them? Exceed Games. Those guys have the rights to Wild Arms 5 and 4, actually, which is why those games are not available on the PlayStation Store on PS4 and 5. Unlike his three predecessors, Sony owns them, they're fourth party, so of course they're there. But 4 and 5 are not here, because Exit Games... Exit Games is owned by Marvelous, so maybe Marvelous could do something about it, but they, again, they aren't rich. But they need to, I mean, come on, Marvelous! Even Miss America is, has been remastering games and old games from uh, the 90s and 2000s, so what's up with that, right? Don't you people... I mean, Wild Arms 5 is one of the best in the series, one of the best, man. I love it, everybody should play it, man. Um, great game, too bad it's uh, owned by a company that doesn't seem interested in one bit in remastering old games. Exceed is the same, I mean, what have they done? Exit owns the rights for the older East games and the um, some of the older East games, the PSP titles, for example, and Trails in the Sky. You ever wonder why we don't have remasters of those games? Oh, well, the, uh, the Odin Felgana got remastered, but only in Japan. Didn't reach North America because who has a rights? Exit Games. I like that company, but god damn it, man, what the fuck are they doing? Maybe they, maybe they should kickstart the remasters. I mean, if Felgana has already been remastered, why not just add, take that same remaster and add the English translation? That's all you gotta do, goddammit! But no, Exit Games, you gotta love those guys. I'm interested in buying your Boobnix Inferno, but you don't mention it often. Any reason why? Probably because most people ask me about what someone just asked me, about what's a good place to start. And Nick's Inferno is one of my best books, actually. Uh, I think it's my masterpiece. <laughs> uh, it really is one of my favorite books that I've written, personally. But it's uh, really... it's kind of hard to get into because it's so David Lynch-like. Like, really weird. Uh, you gotta read it carefully to understand what's going on and then reach your own conclusions at the end. You need to decide what really happened, what the fuck is going on, because it's really freaking weird and confusing. Uh, it's also really dark and there's a lot of negativity in it, a lot of hatred. And, but I love it, man. It's edgier, edgy as fuck, but in a good sense. Uh, yeah, I think it's one of my best books and I do strongly recommend it. And it's David Lynch-like, yeah. Like, it starts kind of like, okay, you understand everything perfectly well, and then it reaches a point where you're like, what the f what? <laughs> That's Nick's Inferno for you. And this English version, it includes both volumes, because in Spanish they were released separately. But the English edition includes both. That's why it's called the, the complete edition. It's the entire book. And there's, there's some small extra stuff in there, some extra scenes in there that were in the original version. So this is the, this is the definitive edition to, to read of Nick's Inferno. Yeah, buy it, man. I mean, it's a great book. Someone saying how I like Nick's Inferno, you can really feel how angry everyone is. Yeah, I was really angry when I wrote that book. I was like, man, I hate society, I hate humanity, I hate politics, I hate the government, I hate the system, I hate everything. Yeah, let's write a book about that, to let it all out. And Nick's Inferno was born. When was your last frustration in a JRPG? I think it was... Um... Probably Fallen Legion. It's such a frustrating game when you die, man. If you die at the end of a stage, it's back to the fucking beginning and... Oof. Holy shit. Maybe Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. The bosses you fight in the uh, post game on extreme difficulty. Uh, you didn't die. But man... I remember I got so frustrated in one of the character quests you, with Stata. You fight the little freaking girl, I forget her name, one of the generals. 
Oh man, what a pain in the ass! Oh my god, I died and I had to level up and come back later and I beat the crap out of her and it felt great. But that first battle was so frustrating and it almost made, almost made me rage quit. I didn't rage quit on Granblue Fantasy with Link, I mean in the game overall because I, just, I hurt my thumb and I'm trying to stay away a bit from action RPGs right now because I mean I'm the button mashing type of guy and Grand Blue Fantasy will link, holy shit. You mash those buttons, man! And fighting bosses on extreme difficulty is insane, so I quit. It's not like I rage quit. If I ever do another rage quit video, Grand Blue Fantasy will link is not gonna be there. Fallen Legion, though, that's not a JRPG, but. God damn! God damn! What's up with this song? It's really good. Bomberman Tournament on the Game Boy Advance. Pretty good, right? Great game, man. I mean, great song. This the, the game is also pretty good too. Bomberman RPG. 